Hello everybody, Sandra Elijah here from Kyiv, Ukraine. Today we are going to be talking about the most epidemic of Nigerians' problems. And it is electricity. People uh, know, everybody in Nigeria knows that this is our number one request from this government. And the government come and go and no electricity. They come and go, no electricity. They promise and come and go, no electricity. <laughs> so the only thing that is constant is not electricity that is constant though. And that's the only thing we want to be constant. But what is constant is that is lack of electricity is constant. But the government keeps on coming and going. So today I'm talking about electricity. What Nigeria must learn from Mauritius and Seychelles. Now, why Mauritius and Seychelles? Because they are the smallest countries in Africa. They are the smallest, tiniest, because we boast ourselves as the giant of Africa, right? But these are the ants of, if we are the giants of Africa, these are the ants of Africa. But they have electricity supply in their country. They resolve the most important problem. The most important challenge they resolved, which is they provided electricity to their citizens, 100%. In fact, they have more and better electricity supply than South Africa, these small countries, Seychelles and uh, Mauritius. As a matter of fact, uh, because of, thanks to the fact that they're able to resolve the electricity problem, the, it just boost, boosted their uh, productivity so much that they, these two countries now, uh, Seychelles has the highest standard of living in Africa per capita per capita standard of living. And the same thing with Mauritius. Mauritius is second in Africa because they resolved the electricity. You know what the electricity, the solution to the electricity problem could have brought to Nigeria? It, we were, it, I mean, and Nigerians are industrious. We are enterprising. It would have just boosted the whole economy and the life and the standard of living of our people. But as long as we are boasting ourselves that we are giants, we are this and that, let's humble ourselves. Let's humble ourselves and go to the ants. Because that's what the Bible says. Go to the ants and learn from the ants. We need to go to the ants of this world, to the ant nations of this world and learn. Now, but I would not be in support of what the new minister of power, <laughs> what his position is. Our new minister of power um, has decided, to, when we, after I was sworn in, you know what he did? <laughs> it's, it's, it's for me, it's shameful. Because the first thing he did is to ask Nigerians to pray, to begin to pray that electricity, <laughs> that electricity will work. <laughs> I said, are you, who are you asking to pray, pray? Are you asking Muslims or Christians to pray? If it is Muslims you are asking to pray, make you go to Saudi Arabia now. Go and ask them, is it the prayer they pray there? That if you help them to resolve the electricity problem. <laughs> <laughs> or you go to Indonesia, or you go to Pakistan. Where the Muslim, any Muslim country you like, Kuwait, where you go see? Is it the prayer that brought the solution to electricity problem? <laughs> oh, these Nigerians, they will not kill me. Before I used to think, I, I even wrote a whole book on it that uh, only God can save Nigeria. I wrote that it's a myth. What a myth. That it's a myth to be waiting on God to come and do what he has told us to do and what we can do by ourselves. <laughs> anyway, let me go back to my topic. So electricity, electricity, we all know that today life without electricity is almost impossible. Electricity is, a part, is so significant that it is a significant part of man's daily life. Without electricity, nobody can function. Can you imagine a whole country without electricity? How do we function? Only God knows how we function. We have been left in the 12th century. Uninterrupted power supply of electricity is as essential as life itself. If you don't have electricity, then you don't have life, especially in this competitive age that we are living in. Adequate electricity supply stimulates economic activities of the country because virtually every economic growth is tied to electricity. So how can we just be dreaming that we are going to be become a country, a civilized country, developed country, or top 20 without electricity. It's a dream. Many economic activities of human en en endeavors right now involves and revolves around only the use of electricity. And without electricity, you can't do anything. Everything is paralyzed by electricity. Even industries cannot function. Most of the activities of industries are carried out by electricity. In the industrial life is basically anchored on electricity. So if you don't have electricity, no industry, no manufacturing, no development. Electricity 
plays an important role from production to distribution of goods everywhere, anything, even to the storage of goods, is electricity. And without electricity, we don't have a country. I don't know if it is this only, if it is the only problem this government can resolve, any government can resolve for Nigeria, we will say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will pray. Nigerians will pray to you. Today, many companies in Nigeria have closed down. Many of them are closing down, as we are talking, for one reason. Because the cost of maintaining electricity and running their company is too much because of inadequate electricity supply in the country. And a lot of com com companies have moved from Nigeria to other countries just because there is no electricity. Even, you know, Nigerians like, their, to, like to enjoy their lives. They like partying. They like oh, I'm there. You know, they like enjoying life. But even social activities cannot even function properly without electricity. So, so uh, you know, without an enhanced use of electricity, we cannot even party very well. We cannot even uh, enjoy ourselves. So, but statistically, if you look at it, the World uh, Bank report says that uh, Nigeria is the second worst country in terms of people lacking access to electricity. Second worst. Only one, one country is worse than us, and that's because they are fighting. There is no, otherwise, all the countries of the world have resolved their electricity problem, apart from Nigeria. It's a shame. It's an open shame, and we need to do something about that. We have 82 million people, 82.4 million people, that don't have access to electricity in Nigeria. Only India has 300 million people, has more people who don't have electricity than Nigeria. But with India, they have one billion, one billion people, so we can understand them. But in percentage-wise, we are the worst country in the world with that lacks electricity. Now, let's go back to that Seychelles that we are talking about and Mauritius. Now, Seychelles only has less than a hundred, let's say a hundred thousand people in the whole country. But they have many problems, but that one, they resolved it. And because they resolved it, it boosted their economy. They have now the, the, the highest nominal per capita GDP in Africa. Because when we resolve electricity problem, we can also you know, in, improve the standard of living of our people. We can improve our productivity. We can improve our manufacturing industry. Mauritius, the other country, also, they got their acts right. They knew what is most important. They resolved the electricity uh, problem. And now they also have one of the highest standard of living in the world. Their electricity supply is better than uh, South Africa. They are the highest product, product uh, the satisfy electricity covered countries in the world. This, I mean, in Nigeria, in Africa, these two countries. And now compare that to their GDP. Their GDP, the GDP of Mauritius is like 22,000 uh, per capita, $22,000, 22,000, 22, almost 23,000 uh, per capita, while Nigeria is 4,000. See the difference. It's a, it's a disgrace. And that is just the second highest in, the, in Africa because the first highest is Celsius, which is even higher also. So we need to do something about electricity. If we want to improve the life of our people, if we want, let's stop talking about raw materials and the oil and everything that we have. We don't have anything. If we don't have electricity, we don't have anything. If we call ourselves giants of Africa, let's resolve this problem. Let's go to the ant of Celsius and learn from them. Let's go to the ant of Mauritius and learn from them. And of course, talking about the minister that I mentioned, <laughs> our minister of, for power, or of uh, power, whatever you call it. I think his name is Sal Salem Aman. <sighs> Let me talk to him, Mr. Salem Aman. Please take a trip. Form a team of people, Come form a committee. Take that team of experts to the leading countries of the world and learn how they resolve their electricity problem. And let us use the same approach. We need to work hard. Yes, we know that God, you know, we need God's blessings. But when we work hard, God blesses automatically. God has created the world in such a way that when you do your own part, God does his own part. Don't worry. You don't pray for him to send the sun now. You don't pray for him to send the moon. But in the, when it comes to electricity, it is our own part that is lacking. Once we do our own part, you will see that God is ready a long time. For the love of God, church and nation, peace.